past 25 years I've been on this journey, I don't know where I'm going. I just know that the goals that I set out to do, I've achieved. Hello, Ma. I was born in Folkestone, Kent, in actual fact, in this house. Um, and I grew up with two brothers, one older, one younger. And my dad did a lot of shift work, and my mum didn't work. She stayed at home and was a mum. It was a very happy home. This is dad's favourite as well, isn't it? It is. He loves it. Look at that, mum. Look at that. And lost your touch, have you? So when he was a child, he would come home from school and find me baking cakes ready for tea time. And uh, he'd stand and watch and then help with the mixing and put the finger in the bowl to taste. <laughs> and um, he just loved it. This is really good, Mum. Good. You made your own pastry? Mm-hmm. Always do. Yeah? Didn't buy it in? No, never. With Philip's decision to go to college, we were very pleased with that. Yes, and it was what he wanted to do and he was happy doing it. I went to the South King College of Technology in Folkestone. It was the start of a new life, and I can remember going in as a lot more disciplined. Hello, Phil. Nice to see you again. <laughs> Back in the old college. How long is this? <laughs> Rather a long time. Um, 20 years. I came back more than 20 years. Must be 20 years, yeah. Um, you haven't changed, have you? That's right. No, you haven't changed. You're still frightening me. <laughs> yeah, good, good. <laughs> I'm glad. You're still frightening me now. Good. I suppose it's the first time, really, that I'd come up against someone who did scare me, and I did exactly what he told me. I remember you walking up with your briefcase yeah, and your yeah. hat on. Yeah, my hat, yeah. <laughs> but he was <laughs> very, very good. He was the best old-school pastry chef I've ever seen in my life. He, the guy was amazing. It's fairly obvious right, right from the start that he was a very keen student. And he used to pick your brains and ask questions, but they were very good questions. I was desperate to learn, and I always wanted to be better than the guy who was teaching me. Didn't like the fact that he was better than me. And that, all my whole life I did that. My first job was in Folkestone, uh, a typical four-star seaside hotel. <laughs> my first impressions of Phil was this good-looking young man, skinny, full of his own importance, but with a special feel for Phil. Welcome home, Mr. Vickery. Has it changed all? That's the same Stoford. I <laughs> know. The position was larder chef. Now that basically means you go into the larder, which is uh, an area that does all the cold starters, it makes all the mayonnaise, it makes all the cold sauces, it prepares all the meat, all the fish, everything else. I can remember being on here, Fred. Veg. Yeah. You shouting at me. I'll be over there. Summer, stock yeah. stock pot here. <laughs> yeah. Fries were there. Yeah. Running around like a blue ass fly. For the atmosphere for a young guy coming into a, to, into a new kitchen, into his first kitchen, is frightening. You don't know what you're doing, you don't know where anything is. Nobody's going to help you. Everybody's going to write you, everybody's going to rag you. And then when they finish you, you've got me. And I wasn't known to be a soft chef. And the girls would come up and go, hi, Phil. Yeah. And you'd be going, yeah, you'd be there going, get out of there, <laughs> don't talk to them, get out. The first lot of chefs I worked with had, I would say, an average of four to five pints of bitter in a service. They just did. So I let us drink for quite a lot Fantastic. and play pool. But apart from those two things, I learned how to cook under pressure. I think Phil matured very fast. Um, he became, he came here as a young boy. I <laughs> hope he left as a young man. Right. Nice Jacket. to see you, mate. You. Bought a copy of the caterer, which is like the trade mag. I thumbed through and there's two jobs in the Lake District. I applied for one and it just said no chance. The other one was at Michael's Nook. We worked together at Michael's Nook, uh, probably the early 80s, 81. Um, for about five years in total. And um, I worked for a chef there who was a real bully. And uh, I worked there for about a year and I got so fed up with it that I was going to leave. And then he left and Paul and I took over. We ran the kitchen essentially together during that time. And Paul and I got into the Master Chef's book. We were 22, for goodness sake, at this time. Yeah, he'd be more sort of pastry, dessert led. Um, I was so taking care of the main courses, fish, hot meat and fish. Within 18 months, two years, we had an Egon Rone star, which was a fantastic thing in those days to get. We were voted the best cook in the Lake District by um, another guide, and it was great, and we had four happy years. 
I left Michael's Nook and got a job at Grave Tie. Hey, oh, Tommy. Hey, <laughs> good to see you. How are you, mate? Yeah, good, 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 good. Oh, I can't going believe really well. it's 20 years ago I was here. Oh, no, yeah, and it's flown by. It was it? great. We made all our puff pastry, croissant, everything. You know, on a Tuesday and Thursday, you get a fish coming, you know, 40, 40 soles, 15 salmon, two bags of scallops. We used to get bin liners and cut the tops out and the arms out and wear them and just spend all afternoon doing it. Billy Moshef, which you, you know, you've met Billy. He was a little boy when I was first saw him. Yeah. All right, Bill. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, things have changed a little bit, but the structure and the whole thing, she does a great So, how long have you been here so. now? Oh, no, sorry. Tom and I were sous chefs together, so like equals. And we ran the kitchen, it was great fun. We would pretty well do all the ordering. We would make sure we would do the service every day. He would probably do pastry larder. I would do sauce and fish. So we'd work together. But it was um, it was all about teamwork. Any boy, <laughs> Mr. Vickery, are you all right? I'm fine. How are you? I'm fine. You haven't changed, boy. Well, I am. Why should I? You haven't got a grey hair. <laughs> I know. Look at me. Look at me and Tom. What a great place. Wow. They had their own garden, they grew their own vegetables, they made their own vinegar. Good grief. That was the time I thought I knew something but didn't. And I went down and thought, my God, I don't know a thing about cooking. Look at the asparagus, Phil. Wow, that's just look at coming that. up. Yeah, that's you know, wow. the best of English asparagus. And that's where I think I got my love of growing great British produce. <laughs> I left Grave Tie. I went to the castle in Taunton. Gary Rhodes had left, you know, Michelin star, huge, very, very well known chef, and I just, I was nobody, and I took over, and it was quite difficult. Nobody else was doing what I was doing in the way I did it. It was great that I finally had a base that I could say, yeah, this is my food. It wasn't any premeditated thought, I just cooked the way I wanted to cook. I've cooked for two prime ministers, I cooked for Maggie Thatcher, I cooked for uh, John Major. I made the Queen Mum's official um, uh, 100th birthday cake, which was quite nice. Royal Mail phoned me up and said, do you want to do it? I said, no, no, done that years ago. And they told me how much they're going to pay me. I said, yep, when do you need it? Not a problem. Television phoned me up and said, look, it's ready to steady cook. And phoned, do you want to do telly? And I said, no, thank you. Ooh, I'm a professional chef, don't do that sort of thing. So that was nine years ago. And then from there, obviously MasterChef came and Who to the Pudding came and obviously This Morning came along and, and, I'm, and it's... You know, it's it's nice to be thought of in that way. So what we got? Oh, sorry. Fine. Coupled with the fact that I did meet my wife on telly. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was your arm. <laughs> so you know, I sort of thrust into the limelight. I think someone called it guilty by association, which is true. I recently opened a pub. Uh, something which I never really thought about, but uh, in hindsight, I think it was a great thing. It's fairly unique, because there's not many places to do what we do. So it's actually quite nice to bring those all together in a really relaxed atmosphere. You can have a pint, you can have a sandwich, you can have a bowl of white bait, whatever. But to me, that is real British cooking, real British food served in a pub environment which is uniquely British. Big man. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah. There you go. Thank you. There's your tripe. Lovely. And your steaks. Now, um, the thing about food is it goes in circles. And everyone thinks they're doing new things, but they're not. Generally speaking, it's, um, I'm cooking food now in the pub, for instance, that my mother cooked. And you can't reinvent the wheel. You get a good recipe, that's it, stick with it. I'm a great believer that if you're good at your job, things will happen around what you do. You don't have to force it too much.